My name is Brother Kenneth Nebwe. Welcome to the place of warning and forewarning. The question today is, is sexual immorality covered in the Christian freedom? Is it true that sexual immorality will not in any way affect one's salvation in Christ? Don't go away. We will begin the discussion after this moment. Welcome back to the place of warning and forewarning. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please tap on the red subscribe button below. Also tap on the bell that will appear from the subscribe button. That's how you will know when we upload a new video. What did Christ see in his church that moved him to send an urgent message and warning to his churches? What did Christ see in your life that moved him to send an urgent message and warning to save your life. What is the major concern of Christ in his message to the churches? Christ saw a great increase of false prophets and apostles in his church who have brought down noble corruptions and heresies, deceiving and drawing the people away into eternal perdition. Christ's concern is to stop you from falling away into the hands of the false prophets and apostles who have distorted the words of Christ to weaken the power of the gospel and the authority of Christ. Christ is concerned because there is a widespread collapse of moral structure in his church. The people have become lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Christ is concerned because the people that professes to be Christians are mere religious. His life is missing in their lives. They have the form of godliness but deny the power of the gospel that produces genuine repentance. They have the form of godliness but don't manifest God's power that can save them from sin, selfishness, and immorality. Christ is concerned because there is unbelievable increase in immorality, shamelessness, throwing off of moral restraint, and rebellion against Christ in his church. Christ is concerned because sexual perversion, pornography, ungodly music, lustful entertainment, homosexuality, lesbianism, and occultism are prevalent in his church. Christ is concerned because the nude and licentious dresses being worn by prostitutes, musicians, and performers in the nightclubs have infiltrated into the church. Christ is concerned because the church could not fight nor stop this sinful threat because they are busy amassing crowd and competing with each other on who we own the largest congregation. Christ is concerned because the church is continually grieving the Holy Spirit and has abandoned the gospel of repentance and of the kingdom of God. Christ is concerned because the church has fallen into apostasy and they are now teaching that once you are saved, you are forever saved. Christ is concerned because the professing sisters are coming into his church, brandishing their naked bodies in the presence of God. Some go hair wire displaying their lowest trousers and mini skates which they caught to display their underpants while singlet takes the place of this same blouse in the church. Christ is concerned because they are mocking the almighty God and they abuse him to his face. Christ is concerned because the present church poses as Sodom in her ways similar to that of Gomorrah, with infinitesimal few as true worshippers, too meager to turn the tide to the better. Christ is concerned because the church is grossly distracted. Most preachers have lost their bearing. They are no longer preaching salvation and against sin. But the lucrative and easy gospel of deliverance, healing, and prosperity. Christ is concerned because sin is flourishing among the preachers and the laity. 
The church is debased, giving birth to corruption, greed, and covetousness. Public and private thieves, robbers and kidnappers, tricksters, and all manners of agents of unrighteousness celebrate their inglorious wealth in the church as thanksgiving. In addition, they are rewarded with titles as elders, deacons, and knights. This is what Christ saw and sent an urgent message and warning to the churches. This is what Christ saw in your life and sent an urgent message and warning to the church. The question is, as a Christian, does the agony of Christ over sin in his church concerns you? As a Christian, does the cry of Jesus over false prophets and apostles in his church concerns you? As an individual member of the church, are you one of those who flaunt your sins about, walking Jesus to his face? Because your prophet and apostles said you should go on. Yes, you're a Christian. Nobody takes the title from you. But as a Christian, the sin Christ found in his church are there in your life. How would you feel as a Christian? Looking at Jesus, weeping over the sin in your life, and you are not weeping along with him. How would you feel as a Christian when Jesus stops you in the midst of praise and worship and begins to weep for your soul? In his gentle voice, he is saying, your half-naked breast showing all over the internet has removed your name from the book of life. With tears mingled with his voice, he is saying, you are deliberate sinful photos all over the internet showing the whole world that you have a big and seductive bomb bomb has removed your name from the book of life. How would you feel as a Christian? When your pastor noticed your conversation with Jesus, seeing that you are about to weep along with Jesus for your sin, he calls you and says, wipe your tears. Don't cry because of what Jesus is saying. The things Jesus is pointing in your life will not in any way remove your name from the book of life. What Jesus needs is praise and worship. And he hands the microphone over to you. Looking again at Jesus, his tears dropped before your eyes. In obedience to your pastor, you turn your back to the tears of Jesus and goes on with the praise and worship. Stop! False prophets and apostles are not going to heaven. And we never care for your soul. The warning today is to remember from where you had fallen. Remember the years when you began to hear about Jesus and his works. This pastor was not there. Remember how the word of Jesus pricked your heart and convicted you of your sin. This pastor was not there. Remember how you trembled at the word of Jesus and shed tears when you realize you are a sinner, this pastor was not there. Remember how you made the decision to follow Jesus and receive him as Lord and Savior. This pastor was not there. Remember how holily and obediently you walk with Jesus in all the ways he led you to go. This pastor was not there. Today, all your salvation experiences with Christ has crashed and the fear of God departed from you because you found a prophet who says that Jesus does not really mean what he says concerning the sin in your life. Who says that sexual immorality is covered in the Christian freedom and will not in any way affect your salvation in Christ? Dearly beloved, the sin in your life is a mark and an identity that you are of the devil. The sin in your life is a sea of ownership engraved on your soul by the devil. It is a proof and evidence that the devil has sown in your life 
and may rip your soul in eternity if you don't repent today. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, He that committed sin is of the devil. My name is Brian in Nebue. I want to thank you for the time you spent to listen to this message. I also want you to know that we have set aside every Friday to fast and pray for your salvation. That God will grant you a decisive grace to repent and forsake your sin. Because it is end time. If you are a backslider, we will be praying for you also that God will restore back your name into the book of life. To you believers in Christ, we ask that you remember us in your prayers. God bless you.